Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Virginia Association for Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Officers Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us. We are really excited you are here. Before we get started, we do have a few housekeeping items to note. First, if you have any questions at all, feel free to submit those through the Q&A button. You can type in your questions to the presenters at any time. They are there, ready and available to answer any questions that you have. Your camera and microphone are off. You are muted and your video is off. The panelists can't see or hear you. And lastly, this recording will be available a week from today. All sessions are being recorded and can be accessed at strivescan.com backslash Virginia. We are currently in session C2, where my mouse is circling at the moment. And this will also be the same order of presentations. So without further ado, I'll get out of the way and introduce our first representative from Gettysburg College. I'm muted. What a fun way to start off the session. But hi, everyone. My name is Tyra Riedemann. I am admissions counselor at Gettysburg College. I'm also a recent graduate and alum of the college class of 2020. So I'm super excited to share a little bit about my alma mater with all of you. So we are a highly selective school of the liberal arts and sciences. You know, we have on average between 2,500 and 2,600 students, um, undergraduate students any given year. But what really made Gettysburg special for me when I was in your shoes going through my college search process was its location. So I'm originally from New York City and Gettysburg is a very historic town with lots of things to do. We have up to 3 million visitors per year, which is wild. And with it brings a sense of tourism, livelihood, restaurants, all of that for you and your friends to partake in. But we're also close to some large metropolitan areas. So four hours away from New York City, two hours away from Philadelphia, about 80 minutes to Washington, DC, and then about an hour to Baltimore, Maryland. So your professors will take advantage of that proximity and they will plan field trips for you and your friends and your classmates to kind of go and have hands-on real world experience of what you were learning about in the classroom. So focusing on academics, I will share my screen with you really quickly and just show you a bit of what campus life looks like. So as you can see, there's the map of where we are in terms of location. Um, we have over 120 different clubs and organizations for you to partake in, you know, and really find where your passions and interests lie, both inside and outside of the classroom. Next up, we have with academics, we have 65 plus majors and minor programs that you can partake in. It is not um, uncommon at Gettysburg for students to double major or have a major and a minor or a major and multiple minors on campus. I actually was a double major with theater arts and cinema media studies during my time at Gettysburg, but we have small class sizes. So our average class size is 17 students. That teacher faculty, the student faculty ratio is nine to one. So you really get an in depth, close experience with inside the classroom. Most students are able to conduct research as soon as their first year on campus, which is like amazing when you're thinking about outcomes. What will you do after your undergraduate experience? If you are thinking about graduate school, law school, medical school, having that hands on research and that ability to dive deeper into your academics while an, an undergraduate school really will help you stand apart when it comes to grad school and anything you do after Gettysburg. But your time in the classroom will not just be on Gettysburg's campus. So we do have a study abroad program that is funneled through our Center for Global Education or CGE for short. And they are the ones helping you plan where you want to study abroad. And we can send you to six out of seven continents. And most students do study abroad throughout their time. For at least one semester, 60% of students go abroad and have that experience. We also have some high impact programs such as our Eisenhower Institute. So if you are really into public policy, political science, you know, trying to be a change maker, you would definitely love the Eisenhower Institute. If you're into community service, volunteering, activism, giving back, our Center for Public Service is the way to do that. So when it comes to outcomes, preparing for life after Gettysburg, you know, our stats say it all. 
we at least every student is 98% of students are in graduate school or employed within a year after graduation. So that just goes to show and speak volumes of the education that our students are getting that transformational piece of being able to be prepared and ready for the workforce or whatever higher education level you decide to pursue. 80% of students can complete at least one internship while they are at Gettysburg. And that is through our Center for Career Engagement, CCE for short. If you want to have an internship, maybe you know exactly what you want to major in when you come in here and you just want to get some hands-on experience, you can do that through CCE. If you have not a clue what you want to major in, that's fine too. Through our Center for Career Engagement, you can partner with different alumni who are eager to help you find job shadowing and internship and externship opportunities for you so you can really find where your passions lie, what you want to do, and figure out what you would like to do as a career for life. Um, we also, as you can see on the right hand side, we have a new business major that is uh, fairly new and um, we have our international global studies major. So if you are really into, you know, different regions of the world and learning how you can help improve them and, you know, how to how other countries think about things and how they model uh, different business structures, that program would be for you. We have a data science uh, minor that is new this year as well. And we also, um, I'll get to the last slide of how do we look at applications, that is through the Common App. Um, and with that, we will see your transcript and your teacher counselor recommendations, right? But we also look at that personal statement. We want you to complete a virtual interview with us. That helps us, you know, get to know you a bit more personally, put a face and a personality to that name that we are reading on that application. Um, our deadlines uh, for our applications, early decision round one, November 15th, uh, early decision round two and regular decision, January 15th. And we do have merit scholarships um, available. Everyone who is a part of, who applies to Gettysburg is automatically considered for our scholarships that range from 20,000 to $35,000 per year. And if you are thinking about the Eisenhower scholarship, that is a separate application, but it is for students who are really involved in civic engagement. So if you are really into volunteering, giving back in your community, I highly recommend that you check that out. But I look forward to answering any questions that you have at the end of the session. Thank you. Awesome, thank you. The next representative is from Arizona State University. Great, thank you. All right. Hi everyone, I'm so happy to be here with you this evening. My name is Sarah. I am the Mid-Atlantic Recruitment Coordinator for Arizona State University. We are a very large university located in the Metro Phoenix area. Um, Phoenix is a very exciting place to spend your college career. It's actually the fifth largest city in the country, which I didn't know prior to working for ASU, but there's a lot happening in the city. Now you'll probably see on this map that there are four campus locations. So we are spread out throughout the Phoenix area. I'll go into a little bit more of the specifics of what those campuses are and what that means for you as a student. But just to kind of visualize, this is where we're at in Phoenix. Um, if you're looking to spend your college career in the heat, you definitely will find that at Arizona State. Average uh, temperature throughout the year is about 75 degrees. Just look at the weather app, it's in the low 90s right now. So if you want to get some heat and some warmth, ASU might just be the place for you. Uh, now here are some accolades that we are pretty proud of. For the past six years now, we have been ranked number one in the U.S. for innovation. Um, what, probably one of my favorite things about ASU is that we are constantly changing and evolving just to be our best selves and the best university that we can be. So we're definitely not a school that's kind of stuck in the times. We are uh, constantly creating new programs, new campus locations um, to just better serve our students. We are also ranked number four in the US for uh, first year experience and undergraduate education for a public university. So very proud of those accolades that we have received. Oops. So these are our four campus locations. Um, where you are studying will be dictated by your major. So we do have some programs that are intentionally placed at only one campus location, but we also have other majors that are offered at multiple locations. So in that case, you can sort of customize your experience at ASU um, into something that you're really looking for. 
if you want a really big school feel with a lot of school spirit and Greek life and athletics, the Tempe campus might be right for you. If you're looking for more of a quiet, intimate um, college setting for your four years, uh, the West Campus or Polytechnic Campus might be for you. So there really is something for everyone. No two ASU experiences really look alike. So the downtown Phoenix campus is right smack downtown Phoenix. It is home to popular programs like journalism, criminal justice, health science majors like nursing uh, and criminal justice. Our Polytechnic campus is actually an old Air Force base. So that is where our aviation students study. Um, so we have uh, all the aviation simulation studios and the airplanes for those students. This is a very hands-on campus. So think um, more technical engineering programs as well. Tempe is probably the campus you're most familiar with. If you think of ASU, you probably think of the Tempe campus. That's where most of our students study. It's where the majority of our break, uh, degree programs are held. The population at the Tempe campus is just under 52,000. So just that campus alone is huge. Um, a lot of programs that are housed at Tempe, we have a lot of liberal arts and science programs, um, engineering, business, education, performing arts, you name it. And the last campus is the West Campus, which is our smallest. And this uh, campus is home to our forensics program and some of them are more interdisciplinary majors as well. So we are a huge university. We have a lot of students. We have over 300 degree programs. We even have more than one campus. So you might be thinking, how would I fit in? Would I be able to find kind of my sense of community? Um, the answer is yes. We have a lot of uh, resources in place to help you really find your fit at the university. Um, we have over a thousand student clubs and organizations. Uh, we have religious organizations. We have student coalitions, which are going to be more identity based, like our Black African Student Coalition, Rainbow Coalition for LGBTQ students. There's a lot of ways to get involved outside of the classroom. Another way we create community is through our residential colleges. So you will be expected to live on campus for your first year and you'll be living with other students who are in your academic college. So engineering students will live with other engineering students, um, theater students with other theater students, so on and so forth. So that really creates that kind of sense of community right in your residence hall. You might be on the same floor with other students who are in your same classes or at the very least your same major. So that was a quick rundown of ASU. If some of that sounds exciting, let's talk about how you can become a Sun Devil. So we have a uh, admission policy at ASU called Assured Admission Requirements. We, um, look our, we are looking at strictly academic information during the application process. So we look for the 16 classes you see on your screen. Um, a lot of these might mirror your graduation requirements, but these are the courses we look at um, for incoming freshman students. So if you're meeting all 16 of these classes and have one of the requirements on the right, you know you'll be admitted to ASU. So either an admissible test score, that GPA requirement, or that class rank. If you have one of those, all 16 classes, congratulations, you know you will become a Sun Devil. So very straightforward admission policy. We accept the common application, coalition application, and our own application as well. So if you have any questions or want to explore us further, definitely take a virtual visit. And thank you so much for joining us this evening. Awesome, thank you. Just a friendly reminder that if you have any questions at all, to so feel free to submit those through the Q&A. Our representatives are here to answer any questions that you have. And if you have a specific question, please make sure you note that in your question. The next representative is from the University of Roehampton. Thank you, Catherine. Let me just bring up my screen here. There we go, hopefully everyone can see that okay. Hi everyone, my name is Haley Drogas and I work for the University of Roehampton in London, United Kingdom or London, England. And I am their regional manager for North America. So I'm actually based in the US and I work specifically with our American students who want to study at Roehampton in London. So we are considered London's campus university and that is because we have a beyond gorgeous um, Parkland campus in Southwest London. So you really have best of both worlds because you have 
the city of London, but then you have a beautiful campus that is a quick 20 to 30 minute bus ride away or 15 minute tube or underground ride away. So pretty quick into central London. And we just before the pandemic started, we're ranked in the top 10 um, universities within London um, by the Times Higher Ed. And we have a, a very proud history dating back to actually about 80 years now. So here's just a quick map to show you um, where we're located in proximity to central London. So you can see, you know, where Big Ben is and um, London Eye and everything, Houses of Parliament that's in the central London area. And then you can see us the green building down by Wimbledon. So um, in case you have not been to London before, London is a very spread out city. So it may look like we're a little bit ways out of the way, but we are still in London. And just to touch on a few facts and figures about University of Wolverhampton, our bachelor's degrees are three years in length. So if you're a student that necessarily doesn't want to be in school forever, or you're trying to find a way to save money, studying in the UK might be a great fit for you because you only have to study for three years to complete a bachelor's degree. And we do accept US federal aid, so you can still utilize FAFSA to come study with us in the UK. And we have numerous scholarships available. Um, Merit-based scholarships are something that a lot of my American students um, are awarded in order to study with us. And they range from 1,000 to 4,000 pounds off your annual tuition. And we have other scholarships available as well. And we're so excited that the United Kingdom is bringing back the post-study work visa, meaning that you, um, after completing a degree with us in the UK, you are eligible to then stay in the UK for up to two years on a sponsored visa, work, intern, travel, whatever you want to do. And we are SAT and ACT test optional, and we have great accommodations on campus, which we'll touch on. So just a little more facts and figures here. We have approximately 141 nationalities on campus, so very diverse. And of our 8,000 students enrolled year on year, 10% of those are international. So you will truly get to immerse yourself amongst UK culture and students. And 93% of our students go on to find employment within the first few months of graduation. And then jumping on, we have seven academic departments. So here is a list of our undergraduate courses and those seven academic departments that hold all of our programs are the School of the Arts, Business School, Education, Humanities, Life Sciences, Psychology, and Social Sciences. And we have a lot of different programs as you can see that we offer and our um, research on campus is really, really important in, within the London area. And 66% of our research is actually considered a world-class standard, which is actually on this slide here. And within some of our departments, 100% of the research done within those departments is considered a world-class standard. So we're very proud of that. And if you're looking for a school that's always innovative and on the cutting edge, then Rohanson might be the right fit for you due to our research. Now, a little bit about how to apply to Rohanton. We're on the UCAS application. So if you're not familiar with UCAS, it's basically like the British version of the common application. So you pay a small fee and you can apply for up to five schools at once. And Rohanton could be one of those choices. I also like to recommend to students to just apply directly to our website because it's free. And as you can see on the screen, we do have um, scholarships that go up to 4,000 pounds off of your annual tuition, and we have rolling admissions. Now, a little bit about our entry criteria. Our GPA equivalent, because it varies um, depending year on year and country to country. So for the US students, we typically look for an equivalent of a 2.8 to 3.0 um, GPA from your high school transcripts or undergrad if you're transferring. And then, like I said, we're test optional and we do just have a few programs that require extra um, requirements as you can see. And for transfer students, we have a lot of options available for you as well. And just a little bit to touch base on what you're looking at for cost of attendance. 
it is quite affordable to study in one of the best cities in the world. So roughly for cost of tuition, living on campus or even off campus and all other expenses, you're looking at only 35,424 US dollars per year. And that is, um, you know, taking into account that you only have to study for three years with us. So you're really saving money. And I just wanna quickly jump here, whoop, there goes my timer, um, through some photos and that is it. Thank you so much for your time. Very helpful information, thank you. The next representative is from Randolph-Macon College. There we go. Hi, everyone. My name is Olivia McGuckin, and I am an Associate Director of Admissions at Randolph-Macon College, and I'm excited to see you guys log on tonight and join us. Thanks for being here. Um, I'm going to chat with you a little bit, um, like the rest of my colleagues here, some of the nuts and bolts, and then talking about the application process. Um, would love to explain this picture here that we have on screen is actually our student center. Um, the azaleas are blooming on campus, and students are loving those outdoor um, umbrella portico areas um, to be able to do some classwork outside. So a great time to be on campus during the spring. Um, we are located um, outside of Richmond, Virginia, in this, um, in, uh, excuse me, outside of Richmond, Virginia, um, just about an hour and a half south of Washington, D.C. Um, we love that our campus is right off of the um, main interstate I-95 along the Northeast Corridor. We also have an um, Amtrak station right on our campus, which is really convenient for students who like to travel using the train. Um, and it's, it's a great way to be able to access a lot of the major cities along the Northeast um, and the Southeast region. You can see on this slide a number of our statistics, our total student population population is 1600. We are definitely considered a small college. Uh, we are a liberal arts and sciences institute and we really love to focus on the interpersonal relationship and the skill building that you'll um, develop in the classroom and be able to take with you outside of the classroom as you progress in your first career but also your second and third career opportunities after college. You can see here um, our male to female and our insane out of state ratios and then also 23% of our students identify as being racially diverse, which we like to point out for our students and families. Our average classroom size is around 16 students to one faculty member. We strictly um, have professors in our learning experience. We do not employ any teaching assistants or um, graduate assistance in our learning process. We think that really helps our students get the best information from the experts in their field and then be able to develop those relationships with their faculty members who also serve as their academic advisors. Um, we have something on our campus called a 414 academic calendar. And so students will take classes in the fall semester and the spring semester, which are traditional for the college environment. But then nestled in between there, we have our January term, which is where students will do a very specialized experience, usually their internship, their study abroad opportunity or undergraduate research. And so it's a great time to specialize your experience in college, uh, but also get those um, hands-on learning opportunities that might help you as you move on to your next experience. Our Edge Career Center will help you identify your career path or your graduate school that might be a best fit for you. Um, and then you can also see on the right-hand side of your screen some student life attributes that we offer. Um, you can apply to Randolph-Macon through our application or through the common application. It is free to apply regardless of the application you choose to use. We have our deadlines listed down on below for both our traditional um, incoming first year or freshman students and then also for our transfer students. When we're looking at your application, we're number one looking for courses and grades um, and the courses you've decided to take um, in your educational career so far and the grades you've also decided to earn. We require a personal statement or essay because Randolph Macon is a writing intensive school and most of your courses are going to require some type of writing research um, or reflective um, responsive paper um, as a final exam or um, a major part of your grade in that coursework. We are doing test optional admissions, um, at least this year for our current students, and then also moving forward for the next two years, but um, most likely we'll be going test optional for the rest um, of our time, uh, and which will be really great for students. Um, and we also have an optional interview for students. So if you'd like to be able to speak with an admissions counselor on behalf of your academic success or progress, um, be able to just have your personal questions answered, an interview is a great opportunity to do that. We will do interviews over Zoom 
Zoom um, right now, but we're hoping to be able to offer in-person interviews as we move forward into the summer. All of our students who are admitted to Randolph-Macon automatically are considered for merit-based scholarships, which you can see on the top half of the slide. Um, what's really great is that you'll be made known your merit-based scholarship in your acceptance letter, which is amazing. And that award will be guaranteed to you each year for up to four years that you're a student. We also encourage all of our students and families to complete the FAFSA or the free application for federal student aid. If you submit the FAFSA to Randolph-Macon, you'll be guaranteed to receive $1,000 from Randolph off Megan simply for submitting the form in addition to whatever um, need-based financial aid money you're eligible to receive in addition to the merit-based scholarship that's on top of the screen here. Um, so we really encourage our students and families to, to ask questions as they're thinking about affordability and financial aid because we're here to help you through that process. Um, there's lots of different ways to connect with our admissions office. These are some of the folks that make up our team on this slide. Um, right now, we're offering information sessions every day for students who are interested in getting a little bit more information. We have open houses over the summer and in the fall. We also have different special events that like might be personalized to your region or to a certain topic or academic major that you're interested in pursuing. Uh, we also visit high schools uh, virtually and in person, hopefully coming this fall. Um, so if you're interested in Randolph Megan, make sure you touch base with the admissions uh, representatives that are there to help you um, to see if Randolph Megan is on your list or is coming to your area. We also encourage you to follow us on social media. We have a lot of student takeovers, a lot of campus, um, you know, behind the scenes involvement, which is really great to see as well. And so we encourage you to do that. And then the last slide here is my contact information. You're welcome to screenshot that, um, but we can also provide that in the chat if anyone has questions. And just want to say thank you so much for joining us this evening. Awesome, thank you. Just another friendly reminder that if you have any questions at all, to feel free to submit those through the Q&A. If you have a specific question, to also note the name of the school. The next representative is from American College Dublin. Hello, everyone. I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen. Okay. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Sarah Healy and I am an admissions representative from the American College of Dublin, located in the heart of Dublin, Ireland. Um, so I wanted to start off the presentation by showing you this picture, because I think it's a really great representation of what, you know, Dublin really looks like. There's constantly a lot going on, restaurants, pubs, stores, you know, little nooks and crannies for you to discover. Um, if you bring your attention to the back of the photo, that is St. Anne's Church, and that is where we hold our formal graduation ceremony. Um, so it's something to look forward to a little further down the road. So why Dublin? Dublin is an English speaking city. So even though you're studying abroad, it's not too overwhelming having um, a language barrier. Most of the residents do have an accent, um, but it's pretty easy to navigate um, and understand what they're saying. It's safe, friendly, and extremely fun. Uh, it was recent, Dublin was recently voted um, one of the safest cities in the world. So that's really reassuring um, for a student and parents um, knowing that they're sending their um, kid off to, off to a safe place. And it's extremely friendly and fun. Um, you can go up to anyone, ask for directions, ask for a restaurant recommendation, anything like that, and they'd be happy to help. Um, and Dublin definitely has a reputation of being fun with all of the pubs, um, and that reputation definitely uh, precedes them. Next is that it's a hub for innovation and cre creativity. A lot of big companies like Facebook, Twitter, and Google have their European headquarters in the city of Dublin. Um, so that's a great opportunity for you to think of where you could be moving um, post-graduation. And it's a great base for further U European travels. It's extremely easy to get a cheap flight um, to any country throughout Europe from Dublin. Um, so it's a great opportunity for further traveling and adventures. So we are an Irish American university, which means we uphold the st standards of accrediting bodies from both Ireland and the United States um, through the Quality and Qualifications Ireland and then the Middle States um, from the US. So what this means as a student is that you have the option to pick the path that best suits you. So from, the, um, from Ireland, 
you would be taking a path that's three years and you would just be taking courses um, that are under your degree. And the, the middle states, you do kind of that standard four year path um, with plenty of electives and courses outside of your degree. So it's really just an opportunity for you to decide which makes more sense for you. So I wanted to touch on our administration. Um, so it's, we designed it to be small, um, to emphasize a reduction in bureaucracy. So what that means is that our offices operate under an open door policy, and we encourage our students to really uh, drop by and get to know uh, the staff, the teachers, um, all of us who work there. So, and this is true also within the classroom. Our average class size is about 15. Um, so in the classroom and outside, we really encourage students to get to know um, the staff, the teachers, because we're happy to help you with anything you need help with, answer any questions. So there's, so there's no reason um, to not, not Trump come in. So these are the bachelor's programs that we offer. We have the three-year bachelor's in international business and liberal arts, and then the four-year in international business, hospitality management, event management, and liberal arts, and then four-year BFA in musical theater, performance, and creative writing. Another thing that we're really excited about at the American College of Dublin are our internship modules. So this is a capstone module for um, most of our classes. Uh, even if it's not listed there, we still encourage and help um, place you in an internship that works for you. I mean, we're excited about this because our students will participate um, in an internship in a business environment. So it's a great opportunity for you to get something on your resume. And not only that, but to be in a real life situation. So post-grad, you're feeling a lot more confident. So we welcome applicants from every corner of the globe. And because of this, it's, it's our aim um, at gathering a holistic view of our applicant. We really want to get to know who you are. So because of that, what's required is a minimum 2.0 GPA verified by a transcript. Um, and then a resume or CV for any, um, you know, transfer students or mature students, as we also like to say. Um, and then a personal statement that describes why you would like to study your chosen area in ECD. So this is really your opportunity um, to take the time to paint an extremely vivid picture of you, because we really want to make sure that you are a great fit for the American College Dublin and that we're a good fit for you because it really is a two-way two -way street in that sense. So the rest of these are optional. Um, so we are SAT, ACT optional, um, AP test scores, any recognition or awards and publications. We like to say that if we feel like, um, if you feel like it kind of rounds you out as a student, then feel free to include. And But if not, then there will be no, you know, nothing taken away from you or, we won't look at you in any different way. So we're very accommodating in that sense. Uh, these are the tuition and fees. For the BFA, it is a bit more just because you do have classes um, in different spots and different materials. Thank you all so much. If you have any questions, um, please feel free to email me and I will include my information in the chat below. Thank you. Thank you, we really appreciate it. The last representative, but certainly not least, is from Albright College. Hello, guys. You're on mute. There's a little link in the chat. Please fill it out. Um, I can get you whatever info you need, or we'd like to get to you through that form. Uh, with that said, my name is Eric Goldsmith, and I would love to introduce you guys to Albright College. Okay. So, Albright College is in Reading, Pennsylvania. Uh, it's a small, private, liberal arts college of about 118 acres. Uh, it's one of my one of my favorite facts about the campus is simply the fact that it is so very much enclosed. You can really focus in on the people around you 
and the, the environment that you're thriving and learning in because we only have one main road headed through the campus. However, there's plenty of uh, businesses and other attractions right outside our doors. So it's, it's, very, it's very cool. At a glance, we've got about 1,600 day students. Now that's referring to our undergraduate students. So with that said, we've got a 14 to one student faculty ratio. We're a pretty small campus and that really adds to the sort of hominess that many people associate with us, whether they've just done a tour or whether they have just graduated after four years. Uh, our population consists, consists of tw people from 27 states and 14 countries. We've got a 50% diversity stat. In other words, we have 50% of our students who have self-identified as non-white and co-majors. Co-majors is something I want to point out just because it's extremely unique to Albright College. So it's not to be conflated with being a double major. So a co-major is someone who, let's say you have to get, take 14 courses to fulfill one full major. As a co-major, you can study two areas, major in two areas, but only take seven courses for each. So you're really getting the opportunity to diversify yourself and your, your educational background. So when you do go to graduate, not only do you have one area of, of career and, and job opportunities to go towards informed, you have two. So that's really cool. Some of our coolest and most unique majors are our fashion, music industries, and game simulation and development majors. So our game simulation and development is actually one that we have just gotten off the ground as of about two years ago. So it's one that's really working hand in hand with our computer programming and computer science uh, major. It's, it's, it's got a lot going for it and we're excited to see where it goes. We've got the following five pre-professional programs. So what these programs are, as you can imagine, they're setting you up for success in your either graduate or otherwise uh, embarkment into these careers here. They really do set you up with the classes that you need, the connections you need to know as well in relation to our alumni network that are always willing to uh, work with you in terms of internships and otherwise getting some ahead of the game experience into your desired field. Speaking of internships, we have the Experiential Learning and Career Development Center. So that's really our power, one of our powerhouse resources on campus that handles our internships, study abroad, and research opportunities. So I could, in terms of study abroad, we, we've got a lot of different trips and opportunities. We have some that are, you know, there for a few weeks. We've got some that are semester. We've got some that are for a year. We go to Japan, we go to, we went to India once. We, we, we really do give people the opportunity to go wherever they want. Um, and then again, our internships, we've got a wide uh, network of alumni who are always willing to help out and happy to do it. Clubs and organizations are, ah! We've got tons and it's one of my most favorite things to talk about because it really, it's a place where there's quite literally something to do every weekend. You will never be bored if you're just open and you're willing to go and experience something cool. We are division three athletics school. 24 varsity sports. We've got men's, women's, and co-ed teams, and 30% of our students are athletes. So it's really, you know, whether it's athletics or whether it's um, some other extracurricular like theater, you can balance it no problem here. We've got tons of on-campus housing opportunities, specifically 10 different options. We've got suite style, traditional houses, actual houses, 
we've got apartment, you name it. Again, going back to that homey feel that many people speak of when they visit our campus, it really is a place where you can get to know the people around you beyond just what they look like. You really get to know each other. And here is some of our socials, all right? So our socials as well as our number and email. So feel free to reach out to us at any time. We're very much looking forward to possibly having you guys join our family. So thank you for being here today. Sorry there. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you so much to our presenters. We do have a few um, moments left. And so we'll go ahead and pivot right now into our Q&A. If I can invite all our presenters to go ahead and turn on their cameras and unmute themselves. We'll go ahead and get started with our first question here, which is what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Again, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we'll go ahead and get started in the same order you all presented in. Um, advice I would give someone going through the college search process. I know what would have been helpful for me to have been told is to ask any and all questions you have to not only admissions counselors, but see any way your schools can get you connected to current students. I know it was really helpful for me as a first generation college student, you know, to talk to current students at the time at Gettysburg to get their opinions on what they loved about their school, but what are some things they would change and how open was the administration to making those changes uh, for the current students. So I would definitely say, make sure you're having those authentic question, uh, questions and conversations, not just with counselors, but with students that you will might most likely be having class with um, as a part of the institution community. Yeah, and I would mind kind of piggybacks off of that, but uh, visit if you can. But um, other than that, just engage with the university, follow them on social media, subscribe to their email and their newsletters. I think one great thing that has come out of this past virtual year is you are now able to do so many more visit options virtually. So instead of actually physically stepping foot on the campus, if you're looking out of the state or even out of the country, like we heard this evening, sign up for a virtual visit session, um, sign up for a Zoom session with an admissions rep. There are so many ways to engage with the university. So that's what I would definitely recommend at this stage. Those were really great, by the way. <laughs> Just to add to that, um, I like to say research, 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 ask questions, ask questions, ask questions. One thing for me back when I went to university that I think was um, really useful to know was to not be afraid to ask what funding options are available. Both of my students were in the military, so they got to go for free. I did not. I had to find, you know, all I had to find out about FAFSA. I had to find out about scholarship and grant opportunities. So do not be afraid to ask. And even if you decide to stay local and then transfer, there are so many scholarships available to transfer places. So definitely just do all of the research you can. That way you can go to school and um, you know have peace of mind with how affordable it is. That's all great things. Um, I would say, especially right now, um, asking colleges uh, that you're engaging with in that process, um, what they learned about their community through the challenges of 2020, um, and maybe some of the ways that they're going to continue to adapt moving forward. Um, I know, for example, Randolph-Macon College has been in person um, this entire year, but we've had a lot of hybrid learning models, and we're, we're thinking about keeping hybrid learning, which we have never had before. We used to really pride ourselves on not doing any online, um, but really Realizing that that's a great method for a lot of students and a lot of students that are considering us as a college option. So I think asking your colleges, you know, what have they learned about their community through the challenges of 2020 um, and how do they continue to plan moving forward? Uh, yeah, I would also just say research. There are tons of colleges out there that offer tons of different things, um, as you can see here just with this group of colleges. So just know exactly what you want and you're looking for. 
um, because in the end, you know, you really have to have that special connection with the school. So don't be afraid to over research for sure. <laughs> I would say almost I would ditto everything everyone has said here in terms of finding your college. But what I would speak to is once you get to it, I don't believe that you can be wrong about your college, about where you choose to go. If you're open and you allow yourself to work with the people around you, the staff, the professors, you can make your home and your college experience whatever you want it to be. Okay, guys? So once you get there, be open. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, it's always great to hear great advice from those who work directly at the respective institutions. And so um, thank you for the advice and all the information you all have shared tonight. We have reached the, the end of this session. Um, and so we want to thank you to each of you for joining us. As we close, there'll be a very quick four question survey that will appear on your browser. If you don't mind taking a moment to fill that out for us, it'll be greatly appreciated. And this recording will be available a week from today. All sessions are being recorded and it will be available at strivescan.com backslash Virginia. Again, thank you all and have a great night.